our speeches now, which is uh, the best part of the whole meeting. So for our first speaker, we're going to have Eric Torres. This is going to be speech number two in the professional manual. This is his last speech um, in English until his competition that's coming up. Um, in this title, it's called A Small Favor, and Eric will be providing us his wonderful speech. Please help us welcome Eric. Listen, baby, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. Now these lyrics were the theme of a journey to a very special person. And fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm not talking about my girlfriend, Pierre, hmm. or another woman at that. I am talking about my best friend, Wade Jackson. Now Wade's a good guy. He's the type that you can trust with your wallet and your girlfriend. <laughs> he brought me into the Lutheran faith, and I would do anything for him. In fact, visiting him in Norway was the first part of a backpacking trip to Europe. He asked me to bring him one thing, maple syrup, <laughs> because those dirty socialists don't sell it there. <laughs> and I said, sure, Wade, I can probably bring a little. So I go to Costco and buy <coughs> two gallons of maple syrup. Lesson one, always under promise and over deliver. <laughs> when I packed my backpacking bag, I made sure to wrap the plastic gallons with all of my clothes just to be extra safe. This wasn't going to be an easy journey. First I had to fly to Stockholm, Sweden, and then to Oslo, Norway, and then to Oslo, Norway, where I would then take two bus rides to get to a ferry that would eventually bring me to Wade in Ulston, Vic, Norway. Now I was convinced flying coach to Stockholm was going to be the most uncomfortable part of the trip. And you guys might not believe this. So I decided to get drunk and I pass out on the plane. <laughs> and bam, just like that, I wake up in Stockholm hungover. <laughs> now I have to recheck in, as this is the first international stop. But as, as I approach the baggage claim, I couldn't find my bag. So I wait, and wait, and nothing. Eventually I approach a tall blonde Scandinavian gentleman standing behind a help desk. I walked up to him and said, sir, I may be a little lost right now, but I'm having trouble finding my bag. And with a very stern tone, he looks me dead in the eye and responds, is your name Eric coming from New York? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my name's Eric, coming from New York. He, he takes me and walks me to our room with a, with a clear bag of trash on the table. But as I get closer, I realize it wasn't a bag of trash. It was my backpack, covered in brown liquid, <laughs> Wrapped in a trash bag. The maple syrup. Your bag has been leaking all over my airport. After, after a heated discussion, I convinced him to let it go as long as I wrapped it in an extra bag. So then I make it to my flight to Oslo. Now at this point, I'm tired, I'm hungover. I smell like syrup, <laughs> and I'm starting to get annoyed with Wade because of this stupid favor. I catch my flight to Austin, and when I land, I beeline it straight to the baggage claim. And I wait anxiously with the cold sweat for my bag. Five minutes go by, and I don't see him. Now I'm getting nervous. But I see other people grabbing their bag, and when they do, they grab their bag, pick it up, Take a few steps, put down their bag, look, <laughs> and smell their hands. <laughs> and at that very moment, I knew my bag had made it. <laughs> and a few minutes later, there it was, rolling towards me, surrounded by glossy puddles, leaking maple syrup. <laughs> Scared that I'm going to have to pay thousands of dollars 
for the airport baggage room, the airplane cargo bay, and all of the other pack passenger luggage. I do the only logical thing, and I get the hell out of there. So I made it to Oslo. But this is where it gets awkward and difficult. Because even after four plane rides, I still have a journey ahead of me. And at this point, this, this favor for weight is really starting to piss me off. I flee the airport with a bag of syrup over my shoulder and head straight to the bus station. Now the first bus stop was easy. I stuck my bag in the back, nobody even noticed. But then I arrive at the bus stop. Once I get to the bus stop, I have to walk a mile to the next bus station. Now I couldn't find a cab. I'm hungover, I'm mildly lost, and I'm tired. And now I want to punch Wade in his stupid face. <laughs> My eyes tear up, and I'm angry. Lesson two. If you're alone, walking in a small town in the middle of Norway with a bag of trash covered in syrup over your shoulder, sometimes crying is OK. <laughs> I'm not saying I did, because I don't cry, but it's OK if you do. <laughs> I make it to the bus station. Believe it or not, there's another problem. Two bus options that lead to different locations with the exact same name. <laughs> so I'll repeat that. Two bus options that lead to different locations with the exact same name. Now I don't have a cell phone that works. And in Norway, many people there speak English. But there's still a relatively large communication barrier because Wade is a damn idiot that doesn't know how to give instructions. And I swear to God, when I see him, I'm going to suffocate him with this damn, of, this damn bag of maple syrup. So the last thing he sees is my maniacal face as he transitions through maple syrup purgatory so he can ask God why he made him like pancakes so much. <laughs> Two bus options with the exact same name that lead to different locations. Now I don't want to think at this point. So I pull Carlos and get on the bus with prettier women. <laughs> and it worked out. <coughs> the bus takes me to a ferry that eventually brings me to Wade. And as I get off, I see him there, standing with a simple smile on his face, confused, probably about my appearance. <laughs> Lesson three, laugh at yourself. Now, people, people from Norway, they are tall, blonde, and beautiful. And they have a very effective socialist government. So even their homeless people are well taken care of. And then you have me, a short Mexican, covered in maple syrup, <laughs> hungover, angry, and it looked like I was crying. <laughs> even, even though I wasn't, because I don't cry. <laughs> As I get off the bus, or if I get off, as I get off the ferry, Wade steps in and greets me with a hug. He steps back and he looks at his hands. <laughs> Here, Wade, I brought you a little sir. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs>